What's up everybody, I'm the Mangoose, you are awesome and Undying released the Myth Spotlight for Noxus, a busty bursty mage with fat damage and thick thighs. I've been very curious about her kit because many of the UG team members that we've talked to have expressed an affinity for playing Noxus. After seeing what she'll possibly be capable of, I can understand why. Her model looks quite good, my one complaint is that they didn't keep her fully in frame for this one, I'm not sure why. I'd also like it if they would include the Myth voice lines with these, we are nothing if not luminous. Sarah Dunham did an amazing job with Noxus, and these spotlights would be a great way to showcase the work of the voice actors. I'll provide some links to Sarah in the comments below if you want to check out more of her work. Same with Daniel Hodge, who does the voiceovers for all the spotlights. Noxus's, Noxus's, that's hard to say, archetypes are artillery and burst, so she'll be able to deal significant damage at range, which seems a bit unfair. You'll see with the rest of her kit, however, that in order to balance things out, she has very low mobility. She is, however, an Archmage, which gives her access to the Class Passive. The Archmage Class Passive allows you to put down a rune on the map and teleport to that rune. I have no idea what the cooldown on that will be or if you can teleport while in combat. Her first ability is Prismatic Light. This is a freaking laser beam that you can fire out and channel. The beam deals magic damage per second. No idea how long you can channel it. They kind of made it sound like you could just keep firing this as long as you have mana. You can move and turn while firing the laser, but at a reduced rate. This seems stupid strong and damn near unavoidable. I don't know what the damage from this will be like, but even if it's on the lighter side... Let's see what I did there, lighter side. I think it's still going to be really good. You can just sit on a minion wave and burn them all down. The second ability is Imprisoning Radiance. You lay a rune down on the ground that activates after a short time, dealing damage and rooting enemies. I imagine this will be somewhat hard to land naked. People are going to see this on the ground and just get the fuck out of it. You'll still be able to pull this off, but getting a slow on someone first or using this to follow up a friendly stun will probably be more common. Next up is Light Bound Portal. Open up a portal that fires a succession of little light balls in a straight line that deal damage and lower magic resistance per bolt. If you fire this when you have someone rooted with Imprisoning Radiance, they become heat-seeking light balls that always hit the target. If you have multiple people in the route, then you fire bolts at them too. The way they worded it seems like the number of bolts isn't split between the targets, but you actually get more bolts coming out of the portal to accommodate more targets. Her ultimate is Solarium Ultimus. It's an old school Gideon cosmic rift, but with brighter space turds. If you hit people with the center of this, they take a ton of damage and are stunned. If someone is on the outer edges, they take reduced damage and get slowed. Anybody hit at all by this will take increased damage from Noxus for a bit. Again, probably pretty easy to avoid getting hit by the center of this unless you're already stunned or rooted. Noxus' passive Soul of Light is pretty much a Greystone ult. You store 50% of all damage dealt to enemy myths. Once you get killed, you reform out of light for 3 seconds, pulsing magic damage around you. That's proportionate to the amount of damage that you stored. And then you resurrect with health and mana equal to that amount of damage. There is a cap on how much you can store, so I doubt you'll always be able to come back with full health and mana. You're rooted in place throughout all of this, just like, uh, just like Grayson was, so expect a fun greeting from the enemy team as soon as you're back up. Her special risk reward ability is Convergence. Activating this reduces the mana cost of your abilities. Landing an ability during Convergence lowers the cooldowns of your other abilities. You're slowed while it's active and silenced for a short time after it's done. A lot of the risks you assume from special abilities don't seem like a big deal. However, I can see this one backfiring pretty hard. Yeah, you can chain a bunch of abilities together without sucking up all of your mana, but if you get stunned or just flat out miss some abilities, you have to deal with being silenced at the end, which can be a death sentence in teamfights. She gets this big bright glowing chain around her when she activates this, which will act like a stun me now beacon. That's all of her abilities, now let's talk about her possible strategies. She's a mage, so I think players will naturally gravitate towards using her in the mid lane, which is say the void lane, the, uh, the main lane with the lowest altitude. I think that's a pretty good pick for her. She should have pretty good wave management, and the Archmage passive will allow her to rotate to assist other lanes, and then immediately teleport back to her own lane. Looking at Noxus from the perspective of playing her as a support, yeah, I don't think so. She has one crowd control ability, and that thing will probably be easy to dodge. Her passive relies on her dealing damage, and I think you'll end up being far too gold-starved in the duo lane to buy the items you need to deal that damage. As far as creative supports go, I think a run is a far better option, with Marina, of course, being the best option for support. As far as her tactical use, what I plan to do is use Prismatic Light to deal some damage and herd the enemy to a location where I can catch them with Imprisoning Radiance. 
hit him with the portal bolts, and finish it all off with Solarium Ultimus. Possibly activate Convergence beforehand, depending on the situation. I really wouldn't want to start that shit with an Aran sharking around the jungle just waiting to pick me up and throw me. All of this would be much easier if there was an item that applied a slow on ability hit, however, I could not find such an item in the database. Upon searching for that item though, I realized that there are two items that activate upon taking lethal damage. Her passive also activates upon taking lethal damage. So what happens if you have one of these items and you die? Do they activate together? Does one trump the other? Uh, the first one is Fool's Curse. When you die, you become a ghost with increased movement speed, and after 5 seconds, you explode in an AoE for 10-20% to 20 of your health as magic damage. Uh, the Redemption Gauntlets give you 35% of your max health, and you become immune for 3 seconds, but you deal reduced damage during that time. So again, what would happen if you had like Fool's Curse equipped and your passive up? Would you become a ghost, explode the enemy team, and then just resurrect in waves of light? Or would you simply not get the effect from Fool's Curse until you actually die? Mystery. A lot of how effective Noxus will be seems to come down to an unknown variable, the Archmage Teleport. If you could jump in, deal a ton of damage, die, resurrect, deal more damage, and then just peace out with her teleport, then holy shit she'll be overpowered. However, if the teleport requires like a channel time or you just plain can't use it during combat, uh, you'll have far more you'll have to be far more cautious about how you approach a team fight with Noxus. Now for some random stuff, her dark skin showcased during both her back animation where she goes all Zenyatta, then again during the very end of the video. It's it's awesome. Really nice skin. Absolutely love it. Yuji did a great job with the mist skins. I like the little floaty lights around her wrist, but sometimes you see them in the spotlight and sometimes you don't. What's up with that? I would like an explanation. Like, do you consume those during convergence? Did they just not display properly when recording? I, I don't know. My final complaint, and I've brought this up to UG a few times now, the diagonal wipe transitions during the spotlights. One or two wipes are fine, but if you have to do it 20 times in 5 minutes, you may want to go see a doctor. Poop joke. For real though, some simple cross dissolves would look much more clean and professional. That's all I have for now folks, let me know what you thought of Noxus in the comments below, like the video if you enjoyed it, let me know why if you disliked it so I can improve, subscribe if you want more ethereal content, but for now this is the Mangoo signing off, you guys! Have a good one. Man, good.